The Event Tech Podcast is brought to you by Event Hero. All of the event management software features in the world are worthless if they don't easily integrate with your registration system and other systems you need to make your event happen the way you want it to. Stop making superhuman effort and start using your superpowers. Event Hero provides features you need, like check-ins, lead retrieval, analytics, and alerts, all seamlessly integrated with your favorite registration system and other back-end tools. To learn more and to get started, visit eventhero.io. Welcome to the Event Tech Podcast. I'm John Federico, your host and executive producer, which basically means that I'm the guy who turns the knobs and posts the shows. But what that really means is I'm the guy who finds the great guests. And this week is no exception. But before we get there, uh, a little housekeeping. So most of you are probably listening to this in your ears, uh, either in your car or on, on the subway, uh, in which case you're, you're listening to the audio version. You probably found us in iTunes. That's great. We really appreciate it. If you can head on over, uh, leave us a few stars, uh, write a review if you like the show, and uh, you know, it helps us get the word out uh, about event tech and, and helps teach, teach planners about the tools that they can use. Um, if you're watching me wave at you right now, uh, you're probably watching us on YouTube, maybe our blog. That's great. We'd love a couple of thumbs up there. Uh, that would also be good. And of course, you, know, you can find us all over the interwebs, uh, Stitcher, SoundCloud. Just do a search for the Event Tech Podcast and you'll find us. All right, now on to the show. Uh, joining me today from beautiful San Francisco, I don't know how beautiful it is, I'm kidding, no, I'm, uh, at this time of year, but I'm sure it must be, uh, it's freezing cold here in New York, uh, joining me is Tamara Mendelson. She is the VP of Marketing of a company we all know and love as Eventbrite. Welcome. Thanks for having me. It is a balmy, I think, maybe 70 degrees today. Uh, yeah, it's about 7 degrees here. Um, <laughs> Thanks for that. So Tamara, you know, we were joking before we started about, you know, how everybody knows Eventbrite, but you know, we would be remiss if we did not tell people what Eventbrite is. So let's make sure we, we reach those people so that they know exactly, uh, exactly what they need to know about Eventbrite. Sure. Um, so Eventbrite was started almost nine years ago now um, with the uh, with the mission of enabling anyone, anywhere to promote and sell tickets online to their events. And, um, you know, as you mentioned, we're based here in San Francisco, and at heart we are a tech company, but we believe in technology for the purpose of gathering people together in real life. And so our heroes are um, the listeners today, people that for um, their passion or their job are bringing people together through events, through live experiences, and everything that we do, all the technology we create is really to help um, empower them to, to do their work better, to be able to focus more time on the things that they do best and rely on us for things like payment processing or event promotion um, to help them put on the, the most successful event possible. Great. Sounds like you've rehearsed that before. And I'm, I'm kidding. Of course you I did. Have said, I may have said it a few times. Yeah, just a few times. That's great. Uh, you know, that. So, so it's, it's a registration platform, uh, and it's, it's, an, it's one, now I'm going to give it from my perspective. It's easy yeah. to use. Uh, it, it's easy to integrate with, uh, and that, which is, of course, what we do here at Event Hero. Um, it, it's, uh, it really is the simplest way to just get, your, get yourself uh, to spin up an event, uh, at least from our perspective, because even you know, around here in New York City, people say, I'm having an event. What should I do? And someone, someone in the room will just say, just get Eventbrite. And so you know, I think that's how a lot of people uh, n- uh, know the company. That's, um, that's really great to hear, and I think um, you know our 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 momentum and our scale over the the nine years that we've been in business has sort of spoken to that ease of use. We see Eventbrite being used in hundreds of countries around the world, um, and last year alone, I think there are 1.7 million events on Eventbrite um, across all different ty- you know sizes and types of events. But really, the key there for us was making it accessible to anyone to. Uh, make it as easy as possible to put their event online and, and collect registrations or sell tickets. Yeah, I, I think uh, I think the popularity speaks to that. It is it's definitely easy. Uh, wow, and I knew there was a lot. So that number one point seven million events that's yeah. tremendous, absolutely hard, tremendous. Hard to wrap your head around that number, but that's that's a lot of people getting together. 
It is. I remember when I was producing events, you know, nine years ago when you guys were at Molly Guard yeah. uh, and I used it then and it was, yeah, it, but there was not, there was, there was nothing that was nothing of any quality and that was really, and so it's, it's great to see the growth over the past nine years. Thank you. Uh, so let's get, let's get into a couple of things. You mentioned a few things there. We mentioned ease of use, uh, but you also mentioned how to get the word out. That was your language, not mine. We, we typically talked about, you know, event marketing, ticket sales, getting registrations, et cetera. As the, as the chief marketer at, uh, at Eventbrite, I'm sure you guys have learned a lot about what works and what doesn't. I mean, 1.7 million events, that's a lot of data to work from, right? To, to see Absolutely. what people are doing. Um, so what can you tell our audience about uh, what it is to, to use Eventbrite, not just as a registration platform, but also as a promotion platform? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, our, our platform has evolved a lot, just as marketing has evolved a lot over the last um, few years. I think when we first built Eventbrite, we were very much focused on SEO. And what that means is when somebody types in um, either the name of your event or the subject matter of your event into Google. So if they typed in, um, you know, hackathons in New York, that the hackathons in New York that were using Eventbrite would come up first. Um, and we spent a lot of time optimizing for what we what, what is now called the organic search um, to make sure that our customers' events were, were coming up to the top of search results when people were searching. And Google was the number one source of traffic to Eventbrite because of that. Um, but we saw something really interesting happen uh, around 2009. And that's when Facebook opened up their API to events. And we allowed um, event organizers to start publishing their events into Facebook with one click. We allowed uh, attendees who were discovering events on, Ave on Eventbrite to share those events with their friends, with their followers on Facebook and Twitter with one click. Um, and we watched the data in terms of what happened, and it was astounding. We saw Facebook go from non-existent as a driver of traffic to the number 10 spot, to the number 9 spot, and slowly climb its way up to actually the number one source of traffic. Wow. And what that means is that more than just searching for events and clicking, you know, and clicking on the links uh, within Google search, people were discovering events through their friends on Facebook and on Twitter. And it's not really surprising when you think about it, when you think about how you decide what to do, what events you decide to go to. A lot of times it's from your friends, it's through word of mouth, and all that social media does is sort of amplifies and magnifies the social media effect. And by building in the tools to easily capture that desire that people have when they find a great event to go to, to share it with their friends, by making that really simple, not, by not trying to change user behavior, but by trying to to ca capture kind of the wave of, of behavior that people were already engaging in, we made it super simple and then very, very powerful in terms of being able to actually drive traffic back to people's event pages um, just through these social media mechanisms. And so we saw, you know, over the course of that year, Facebook become the number one driver of traffic to Eventbrite. And it still is there today um, as we continue to optimize and um, increase the ease with which people can share events and with which people can discover events through these social media platforms. That's amazed. I, I'm totally amazed. Not the fact that, uh, not for, by the fact that Facebook is so powerful, uh, um, social in general as, as a tool, but the fact that it's number one and it stayed number one. That that I find actually fascinating. But I find now I I, well, I, I don't know about you. Um, I follow you on Twitter, <laughs> but we're not friends on Facebook, so I don't know what your Facebook habits are like. Mm -hmm. um, now, but for me, it's it's a mix of business and personal, right? It's business, personal, some family. Um, I I sort of roll with the, with the uh, philosophy that you don't share anything on Facebook that you wouldn't want to share with your mother, you know, that sort of thing, right? Mm -hmm. So it's all pretty tame. Um, but for the most part, I would say Facebook is mostly personal. Like even my professional racial relationships there or the people I, I've met through, through my profession, I'm friendly with. And so that's, mm -hmm. it's more like that. So for me, I, I would expect to find more, uh, let's call them leisure activities there. Mm -hmm. What, what would you talk, what would you say for someone who has, let's say, well, first of all, I might be wrong, but what would you say to someone who has a business event, like a conference, uh, mm -hmm. and using Facebook for that? Is that just as effective? Would you still put it at number one? Number yeah, two, we, three, we, we have found by types of events, even for business events, that people are sharing them through Facebook. Um, People take different approaches to their Facebook profiles. A lot of people use their Facebook profiles for more of a business-facing um, 
uh, communication set. But we also see LinkedIn actually really, um, really rise to the top in terms of influence when it comes to more of those professional events. Um, so uh, both LinkedIn and Twitter become more important for less of the sort of arts and entertainment concert type events, but more for the professional events. People are sharing um, conferences, seminars, workshops, uh, things like that much more on LinkedIn and Twitter and and seeing greater results in those platforms because that is where people tend to kind of gather more of their professional network. That, okay. And that makes sense. So if we had to, if we had to, you know, put a wrapper on that, we'd say social's huge, probably a lot bigger even than, than some people expect, uh, expected. Uh, but Facebook personal mostly and LinkedIn, Twitter, more professional. So Absolutely. if someone yep. had to say, this is my event, what should I do? There's, that's, the, that's the direction we might give them to try it. Well, so the direction that I would actually give them, I think at a high level, I agree with, with, with uh, your summary, but I think the, the more nuanced direction is actually maybe more of a pro tip, which is test in all the platforms. And if you use a tool like Eventbrite, one of the sort of pro features, um, and by pro features, all the features are available to anyone um, that use Eventbrite, but we find that sometimes some of our more like professional event organizers are using some of the features more than others. And so um, the ability to use tracking links. So um, when you're doing marketing activities to put specific tracking links in those activities. So you as a marketer can track what is it going to have the most impact. So for example, you could as, um, as a, you know, working on promotion for your event, promote your event in LinkedIn, Twitter, and Facebook with individual tracking links. And you can see how many people click on those links, how many of those people end up registering for your event. And you can kind of get a sense for where is your community interacting because a lot of times it's hard to guess these things. Um, and many times we can be surprised by that. So my, my high level advice would be test, test all, test all and everything, but track, right? Test with the ability to under, to learn and understand what works and what doesn't so that you can then target your marketing efforts, dollars, time to the things that you know are going to be most uh, successful for you. Good advice. And I would actually say everyone should follow that advice, whether it be for events or anything else, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but it's always good to have a starting point, uh, which I think it, people will appreciate. All right. So, so social's big. Uh, SEO, now, is SEO still up there? Absolutely. So Google, I think, is our number two driver of traffic. Yeah, I mean, even just from my perspective, if I just search, search on any kind of event mm -hmm. in, in New York City, there's always a hit, always, on page one from Eventbrite, uh, regardless. Um, so, yeah, yeah, I could see how it's still still big. So what other, um, you mentioned these, these tracking tools. Uh, mm -hmm. Now, I know that you can create the unique links uh, through Eventbrite. Do those work? Uh, now, what if someone was a little more, a little more savvy? They have their own website, so they're, you know, they built this big uh, website with the agenda and and uh, who knows what, right? Videos and you name mm -hmm. it. Um, and they're using Google Analytics and all of that. How? What advice do you give to those people? In other words, how do you how do you get a full, uh, how do you get a full, a complete picture? Yeah, you can. Oh, you can actually, yeah, you can actually integrate your Google Analytics into Eventbrite so that you can track, you know, conversion all the way through your funnel. So that's that's absolutely um, made possible by Eventbrite, and that definitely speaks to our approach to working with partners to understanding that there are an ecosystem of tools out there that event planners use, um, whether it's Event Hero or Google Analytics or whatever it might be. And so our approach is. Um, to, we actually invest a lot of our time in our API, and basically that's just sort of a fancy way for saying the way our platform plugs into or hooks into other tools so that event planners can get the best of the, the full tool, tool set that they're using and get a really integrated experience both for themselves and for their attendees. Yeah, we're a big fan of the API, as you, might, as you <laughs> may well be aware. Um, we'll talk about that in a little bit. Uh, so, but Google Analytics, so, so the API, though, is, is separate from the integration you have with Google Analytics. Google Analytics is just, you know, you drop some code in and you mm -hmm. have a unified view. API is a whole different story. So do you have any other tools that you work with uh, to uh, improve the marketing on, on that side? Yeah, absolutely. So we actually, we integrate with over 130 different tools. Um, and some of my favorites from a marketing standpoint are um, SurveyMonkey. So it's really important to gather information sometimes before and 
very importantly, after your event from your attendees um, to understand what, what did they love about the experience, what could you have done better, what would they like to see next year um, while the experience is still fresh in their mind. And so we have an integration with SurveyMonkey that allows you to very quickly and easily send out surveys either before the event or after the event to, to your attendee base. That's one of my favorite integrations and one of our, our um, most highly used integrations. Um, another one is an integration with WordPress, and um, so for a, a lot of uh, event companies or, or events, they may not have their own website already, and or they may want to create a specific one, a special one for the event, and so we have um, uh, an integration with WordPress that integrates the Eventbrite ticket, ticketing experience, registration experience really seamlessly with um, a, a custom website that you can develop through WordPress, and so those two, I those two integrations I particularly um, love, and of course, um, then Event Hero specifically for our conference events um, to give advanced capability functionality at the event itself. Certainly around badge printing and track management, and a lot of the more um, uh, conference convention specific requirements. Um, that's maybe less of a little bit about marketing, but more about the attendee experience because at the end of the day, that's marketing as well. The experience that you give to attendees at your event, how easy that seems, how flawless it seems, and how, e and, and how easy it is for attendees to really find value um, in their experience at the event is absolutely a marketing, um, something that should be thought about by marketing. I, I couldn't agree more. So first on the SurveyMonkey piece, uh, we love SurveyMonkey. We actually have a, a feature, uh, speaking of Event Hero, but uh, we actually have a feature where uh, at the, when we do session attendance uh, at conferences, uh, we actually kick off surveys immediately to uh, immediately after the session to each of the attendees so that they can answer them. And SurveyMonkey is great for that. And it's optimized for mobile and people can do a survey evalu uh, a speaker evaluation right on the spot and be mm -hmm. done with it. And SurveyMonkey is great for that. We, yeah, we, cool. we, we tend to. That's a great practice. I love doing that. Like immediately after someone gets out of a session, that's a great, that's a great tip. Yeah. We, we think so far the, the uptake seems to be much better. I mean, the completion rates are so much higher than if you yeah. leave a piece of paper on somebody's chair, you know, yeah. I don't know about you, but I don't, I'm sorry. I don't fill those out. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't do that. Uh, all right. Any other marketing tips before we, we move on? Cause I, we have other stuff to talk about. Let's talk about other stuff. All right. Let's talk about other stuff. So. Um, I wanted to tell you just so you just mentioned a company near and dear to my heart, haha. -ha. Um, mm -hmm. And um, so event operations is always something that's on my mind, and I and I know it's on uh, you know y your customers' minds. Uh, we know, of course, because we work with them every day. Where they come to us and say, "How we love Eventbrite, we want to use our favorite registration system. How can we do all of these other things with it?" Um, so well, that's a perfect time, of course, now to, to plug something. So I have a plug. For, for those of you who listen to the show, uh, you know, routinely, you know that my plugs are rare, uh, far and few in between, but I have a real plug this time. Um, we have an ebook uh, that we're releasing. Uh, actually, this show will drop today. The book won't be released until next week, but if you want an early copy, uh, visit uh, eventbrightbook.com forward slash podcast, and we'll make sure you get it. The book is entitled Eventbrite Superpower is Revealed. Optimizing Eventbrite for conferences, trade shows, uh, expos, and road shows. That's a mouthful. Uh, but speaking of SEO, <laughs> that's, why, that's what subtitles are for. So if you want to learn all about uh, how to optimize Eventbrite for those types of events and all the things that we've learned uh, along with our partners, whether they, whether they be our customers or with Eventbrite, uh, about how to optimize for those events, be sure to check it out. Um, I definitely want to thank, by the way, uh, Tamara for contributing the forward to the book. Thank you so much. My pleasure. And to Tracy, whose name I'm not going to get right again, so I will call her Tracy K. Tracy is one of your team members, and Tracy has been great. She's helped us coordinate all of this, including this interview. So uh, thanks, thanks to you both for, for contributing. So let's talk about events operations. You guys have done a lot over the years on, mm -hmm. on, on your end. Um, so things like uh, you know allowing people to bring their their printed tickets or even uh, the iPhone app and and check in at the door using you know scanned barcodes and things. Uh, you have uh, a new tool called Neon, I believe it is, mm -hmm. right? Uh, that allows people to register on site. You know, none of these things has existed. Heck, you know, when it was MollyGuard, you know, it was just PayPal, right? Yeah. Uh, so so you got but but really just in the past few years, you guys have come a long way. What have you added to the mix? Uh, I just mentioned a couple of things, but. Mm -hmm. What have you added to the mix? And let's explain some of the things I just, I just mentioned. 
Yeah, I think Neon is a um, a really important step for us on the event operations side, and it's something that we've been working on for a while and are constantly updating and, and improving. And um, really what Neon is, is it's a mobile box office. It's Eventbrite for your event. And one of the things that um, that we uncovered when we were doing research uh, to understand what, what people needed at the event was that many events have a huge amount of people that just walk up. Um, and register or buy tickets directly in person. And as an event planner and event organizer, you have no way of knowing who these people are. You have no way of re-engaging with them in, for future years or for future events. Um, and you have no way of really tracking you know, where they came from or why they're here. And so um, a big part of Neon is the ability to collect ticket sales at the event and not only, you know, collect with credit card, but actually collect information as well. So name, email address, you could ask a a custom question you can say you know how did you find out about this event um, and actually turn all of those figures that in the in the past were just numbers like you knew okay I had a hundred people walk up instead of just saying well I had a hundred walk-ups now you have actually a hundred individuals that you can actually build a rela on your relationship with and that you can continue to um, engage with and, and make sure that they they're aware of future events and that, that you continue to build on um, your relationship with them over time um, and then there's also the payments aspect of it as well. So um, we've seen a lot of event organizers get really creative with how they use Neon at the event for things like merchandise sales or donations, um, other thing, uh, you know, other uh, avenues in which they can collect uh, payments and information from their attendees. And so um, Neon has really enabled. Um, a, a lot more visibility and understanding to to the actual event operations, not to mention just the speed. So um, one of the biggest pain points for big events is waiting in line to get in, right? And that's right. like, that's such a crucial moment of setting expectation for what the event experience will be like. Um, and, you know, I remember one New Year's, uh, we, we just walked around the city to kind of observe New, Year, New Year's events operations. And the, you know, the, the tragedy is when people are just waiting in line for, you know, 20, 30, 40, 50 minutes to get into an event that they've already paid for that they're really excited to participate in. And so we decided we were going to develop a, a set of tools that created the most delightful and easy entry process possible. And so part of Neon is the ability to scan really quickly, um, whether it's a, a barcode on a printed ticket or more and more, what we're seeing is people actually downloading their tickets to, we have an Eventbrite app, um, where as an attendee of event, when you register, you just download the app and your tickets appear in the app. And so you can bring it to the door and you don't have to, hunt, as an attendee, hunt around for that email confirmation or where did you put that ticket, but instead just have it right in your hand. And we've seen really, really awesome expedited entry flows where um, that scanning process is just taking a couple seconds per person and people are flowing seamlessly into the, into the event. And so I think for us, oper the event at event operations and technology, our philosophy is really geared around how do you make that attendee experience as easy and seamless as possible, and how do you empower the event organizer with the tools to be able to to understand the the, the movement of their attendees and 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 their attendee base a little bit better. Yeah, I, I, that's that's tremendous. But let's also be clear about how it works, right? Neon is re it, now Neon isn't its own separate thing, so to speak. It's actually a, a mobile front end to the organizer's Eventbrite instance, right? Absolutely, yes. So, so if, if they set up a, a form, they can use yeah. that same form on site. Yes, exactly. It pulls in all the information that you've already set up in your Eventbrite account if you did that on your computer. Um, and it's, it's seamlessly tied into your full Eventbrite experience. So as you collect more information for people walking to the door, it's, it's integrated into your, into your entire um, Eventbrite account. Um, and the same questions that you would ask for someone re registering online, get a, you can ask at the door or, um, you know, whatever, uh, you know, um, event information that you have in your Eventbrite account gets pulled seamlessly into the Neon experience as well. So exactly that. Neon is an extension, an on-site extension, a mobile extension of your Eventbrite um, account, of your ability to manage your event. Um, right at the event. So you can see, you can log into me and see in real time how many people have checked in from all the people that have bought tickets online and offline, how many of them are actually in the event. Um, you can look up specific people. So if you want to know if a VIP has arrived or not, you can check to see if they've checked in. Um, but yeah, you're absolutely right. These, 
the two are, are, um, are intrinsically connected. I, I always get into the weeds on this show, and uh, it, it's funny because uh, you know some of the folks that work with me are like, "Why do you get into the weeds?" But then I get email all the time saying, mm -hmm. "Oh, it's so great that you got into detail because it's the details." As event planners, mm -hmm. uh, you know, event planners know that it's the details that matter. So I wanted people to understand that this is not yet a whole nother thing they have to set up. They just right. install it, log in, and it it mimics what they have in their Eventbrite account, and that's really what's key about this. Yep, absolutely. And you can, you, you can even um, download Neon and use Neon before your event just to track your ticket sales and to kind of see how your event is performing, see who's registering. It's just a way for you to keep Eventbrite in your pocket a little bit more easily. Right. It becomes like a mobile dashboard, right? Exactly. Yeah, that's great. Um, so w then, then there are things like, now it's interesting though. So, so it doesn't always work that way. So for some events, this is, now this is where I can bring a little of our experience in and, and why we do what we do with you. Um, people, many people consider in our, in our experience, people consider conferences to be more like hotels, not airports, right? So they show up and, and they say, hi, I'm Bond, James Bond, look me up, you know, and the, do you have a receipt? No, I don't have a ticket. Just look me up. Here's my ID. Right. And so, and so, okay, now, now what? Right. So now the organizer has to go through and, uh, go through Eventbrite, check people in manually. And that's, that's a slow process, et cetera. So. From our perspective, this is like one of the things where we've always added value, where everyone said, why do you do that? Eventbrite has this great check-in app. And that's where I give them my story about James Bond and hotels. Mm -hmm. um, so from our perspective, we try to augment that. And when people, everyone's going to have a badge. And mm -hmm. for the events that we serve, uh, they're typically, you know, anywhere between, let's say our, our average size is 5,000 or less. Um, the badges are pre-printed. So I would find James's badge you know, scan the badge, hand it to him and say, Mr. Bond, have a wonderful day. And he would mm -hmm. go off. And now I've just eliminated a headache there. Um, so that's what I also, what I like about the Eventbrite API. And I go back to that once again, um, is that you, the way your approach has always been from now, as from an outsider's perspective, um, is that there's so much to do, but you don't try to do everything. You just try to enable it, mm -hmm. uh, through the, through the API. So what else is coming down the pike there? Um, our, our friend Mitch uh, at, at, uh, hasn't, hasn't given me an update lately. All I keep hearing is that there's new stuff coming someday, uh, but I know you guys are busy, busy and, and, and moving like crazy. Um, can you talk a little about that? What, what, are we, are we going to expect some, are we going to be able to do new and cool things soon? Yeah, I think so that Mitch, Mitch um, is the product manager that is working on the API that works very closely with a lot of our partners. And, um, Without giving away too much, I can just say that the thing he's working on is enabling more t uh, a, a way to integrate more tightly so that when you're in the Eventbrite experience, you don't have to necessarily not log off and log into another system, but be able to do the things that you want to do from one place. Um, and that's a different type of um, technology development that we've been working on for a little while now. Great. Yeah, that I, I was good. I, I hope I didn't push you. That was, that was, that's enough to, to whet people's appetites. So that's great. Uh, we're, we're definitely, I know we are here anyway, looking forward to that. And I'm sure uh, a lot of our, uh, uh, well, I was going to say our joint customers are, are looking forward to that as well. So from an event operations perspective, so we talked about entry. Mm -hmm. uh, and of course, we touched a little bit about what we do and how we kind of add value to the process. Um, what what other what other aspects to to operations? Uh, you mentioned merch, for mm -hmm. instance, which is the the shorthand that even I use around the office, and the guys look at me like because that's not their thing. Merchandise, the mm -hmm. selling of items. So that in and of itself is a big deal, especially for things like sporting events and and uh, uh, other theatrical performances and and con concerts and and that sort of thing. How does that all work? Does that also work through Neon? You said I think you mentioned that before. Yeah. Yeah, we've actually seen some of our customers set that up through Neon as well, so that you can purchase a T-shirt or a water bottle or a poster um, directly through Neon, or also food and beverage. Uh, food, yeah, food and beverages. So whether it's you know if you're selling dessert or um, coffee or whatever it might be um, at the event, you can you can enable that through Neon as well. So we've seen some, a lot of interesting things, or Neon used in interesting ways that we wouldn't have necessarily expected. <laughs> yeah, that happens a lot. You, you find uh, a very in, uh, you know, inventive event planner with a need, and you yeah. know, he, he or she says, what tools do I have? Neon. So totally. can you we've seen that actually in other areas as well. One of the features that we launched last year was um, reserved seating. So this idea that if you're an event organizer, yes. 
And you might want to sell a ticket to a specific seat for your event. So if it's a gala, it might be a specific table. Or if it's a performance, it might be a specific seat, you know, row two, seat D, or whatever, row B, seat X. Um, and so, you know, we we came up with all these possible use case scenarios. So galas and theater performances and um, things like that. But one of the most creative uses of that tool, which we hadn't predicted, is people that organize expo floors. And they were actually laying out the expo floor because in the tool, it's really, really easy. You just design your event space layout. And we thought people would mostly be designing seats. But what we found these organizers were doing, they were designing expo floors and designing booths. And so people could buy, essentially buy their, reserve their spot um, on an expo floor using our what we designed to be a reserved seating tool. But at the end of the day, it's like a reserved spot tool. Um, and so that was really creative. We saw somebody else use it for um, a sidewalk art, you know, chalk art festival. And people could reserve their, their part of the sidewalk. And so it's always really interesting to see how our customers take the tools that we build and then use them in completely different ways and ways that, that we had never imagined. That, that's a, oh, that is a great story. As a matter of fact, that's such a great story. Now, now I feel like I'm going to have to update the book because <laughs> I, I, did, I never thought about that. I personally have never produced a ticketed event or I should say uh, an event, event with assigned seating. So I've never used the tool. Uh, right. But that is such a great, great way to just say, not only sell the sponsorship, but say, yep, I want that spot right there. Yep. And you can enable people to just go in and see the layout of the floor, choose the spots that they want. Um, and it takes a lot of work off of, of your plate as the event organizer because basically it becomes a sort of self-service experience. Oh, that's beautiful. All right. Next edition. I can't, I've had, <laughs> <laughs> writing that book was hard enough. So next edition, we'll, we'll make sure we include that. But that is a great tip uh, and uh, a great teaser too for folks when, that, when I'm trying to get them to come and, and make sure they listen to this interview. Uh, excellent. So Tamara, I, I, I know we're, we're coming up on our time here. Um, this, I'll ask you the same, the same question I ask, uh, I ask anyone. Is there anything you, you wanted to let our audience know? Again, I've said it's primarily event planners, other event tech people. Uh, is there anything you, anything you wanted to let them know that I just failed to ask today? I, di I didn't get to the question. What, what, is there anything else that I missed? There's, there's one thing um, that I think is worth mentioning that I, um, I, I talk about a lot. Uh, and this is, it's this idea of conversion. Um, before I was at Eventbrite, I was an e-commerce analyst, and I spent a lot of time working with retailers, people that sold things online, um, to help them optimize conversion. And most event players, I think, or I would guess, don't think of themselves as e-commerce uh, people. But at the same time, if you're selling registration online, if you're selling tickets online, you essentially are an e-commerce provider. And so conversion is the single most important metric when you think about buying online. And what conversion is, is of the number of people that visit your website, how many of those people actually register for your event? And there are a lot of things that go into optimizing conversion, but if you're, if you're, a, if you're marketing your event and you're spending dollars and time to drive people to the website to learn more about the event, if you can get more of those people to actually register, your dollars go so much farther. Um, and your return is so much greater and your event is so much fuller, et cetera. And so conversion is, I think, a metric that event planners need to obsess over even more. And um, there are a couple things that go into conversion. One is the information on your registration page. So making sure that it's very clear what the event is, where it's taking place, when it's taking place. It's very basic stuff, but if people can't figure that out, um, they're, not gonna, they're not gonna register. Um, and then most importantly, succinctly explaining why. What's the benefit? Why would someone want to go to your event? Um, and more often than not, I see this information kind of buried. Um, it might be one sentence in the middle of like five paragraphs. And bringing that to the top, to the surface, um, along with the most basic information that people absolutely need to understand and know before they register is, is really crucial. And then the last piece that I'll mention, because there's a lot that you know, we could do a whole hour-long segment on conversion, um, the last piece I'll mention is mobile. So we are actually seeing more and more traffic come to Eventbrite on mobile devices. And this isn't organizer traffic, this is traffic of people looking to buy tickets. Um, and you know, it might even this year surpass the number of people that are coming to Eventbrite on their computers. And so what that tells me is that if you as an organizer aren't thinking about um, 
what your experience looks like on mobile. So we spend a lot of time thinking about the Eventbrite experience on mobile. So we got that covered. But as an event organizer, what does your event website look like on mobile if you have an external website? What does your um, conversion process look like on mobile? Uh, I, I just think it's we, we aren't at a time where mobile is in the future anymore for events. Mobile is here. Um, and if we aren't actively thinking about what is that experience like on a mobile device, we're missing huge opportunity to, to improve conversion. Both excellent points. Uh, I, I'm, a, uh, I'm a convert to the church of the conversion rate, and uh, I, I couldn't agree more. Uh, and you're absolutely right. I, I was about to ask you yet another question, but I won't because I know we're running short on time. But you're right. I could have, we could have an hour-long hour long discussion mm -hmm. on, on conversion itself. But I won't do that. Maybe we'll have you back another time. We'll talk just about conversions. Well, I'd love that. Thank All you. Right. That'd be great. So, Tamara, thank you so much for joining me. If people want to reach out to you and thank you uh, for joining me today, how can they do that? Uh, well, uh, I practice what I preach. So social media is my my favorite, probably most preferred method. Um, I'm on Twitter at just T Mendelson. So that's M-E-N-D-E-L-S-O-H-N is my last name. So T Mendelson um, on Twitter. Or if you if you want to email me, I'm Tamara at eventbrite.com. That's great. Thank you. The benefits of getting in early at a company, right? You get your, your first name. Exactly. Uh, yes, exactly. All right. Thank you so much. And to those of you listening in, uh, one more, just one more time. Uh, actually, two more things. Quick, one more quick plug. If you want to get a copy of our Eventbrite uh, Superpowers Revealed ebook, uh, visit eventbritebook.com slash podcast. And once again, take a look. Find us, iTunes. Uh, you can also find us on SoundCloud and Stitcher and YouTube, and uh, you'll see me waving goodbye to you. So if you're on YouTube, until next time, thanks for joining us. Uh, we'll see you. Bye-bye. <laughs>